Here's our experimental setup. We're going to take our filter paper first. Go ahead and get the mass of that. We're going to write that down. 744. Get our initials on that. Let's make sure it hasn't gained too much weight. Alright, 0.746. Okay. So, this is our wine here. We've got a little over 20 milliliters. 21.0 milliliters and the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that the pH of this is sufficiently above 9 for us to proceed. So we're going to take our pH meter here. We're probably going to start off with a pH of around 3 or 4. So we can see the pH is going down there. We're a little below 4. So now we're going to add sodium hydroxide to this. Get the pH to rise up. Alright, it looks like we're approaching a pH of 10. So that should be good enough. So now we're going to take this out. Kind of done its job. Set it over there. Now we're going to add the sulfite to it. So currently we're looking at a situation where we have a colorful or colorful but clear solution. And we're going to add the sulfite to it. And it's going to slowly start to form precipitate. And it's going to become a little more murky. So the strontium from the solution is precipitating with the sulfite. And then we're going to go ahead and let that sit for a little bit. Then we're going to filter it and see how much our mass will go up. So now we're going to go ahead and put our filter paper here. We're going to get it to fold by pushing down in the center. Get our cone shape and then we need to pour some of the solution in here. Get that to stay in place. So you can see that there's, I don't know if we can get this to settle. You can now see some of the precipitate that's on there. So this might work a little better. So you can see the very clear writing right there and then they've got the precipitate there that's making it fuzzy. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take that and slowly put it through here. And then we're going to wash and dry our filter paper, and then we'll get the mass, and we'll be able to figure out how much strontium sulfite there is, and then we'll be able to work backwards to figure out how much sulfite was in the solution in the beginning. So here we are a day later, and here is our 0.746 gram filter paper, which is now up to 0 0.971 grams. So from that we can figure out how much strontium sulfate is on the filter paper and work backwards to figure out how much sulfate was in the wine and then we can figure out the parts per million or concentration. That's not potentially all strontium sulfate, it could be something else present, so this will be the maximum limit on what that sulfate content could be. A brief justification of some of our methods. So there's a lot of different chemical reactions going on potentially and we want the right ones to be occurring. So. One of the things that could be happening when we mix some hydroxide, white wine, and strontium together is we could have the hydroxide form a precipitate with the strontium. However, when we look up the KSP value for that, it's around 6 times 10 to the minus third. So as long as we can keep our wine at a pretty, pretty low pH for the basic range, then we're okay because if the pH is 10, that means our hydroxide is 10 to the minus fourth. Well, if we're looking at that quantity squared, we're, we're well below this, even at low concentrations of strontium. Now, the strontium that you're seeing added is a little over 0.6 mole. To get a little idea behind that. So we're looking at 0.6 times 10 to the negative fourth squared. We're significantly lower than this. We're looking at 10 to the negative ninth instead of 10 to the negative third. So we don't have to worry about that being our precipitate. 
For the strontium sulfide, on the other hand, we want this to be precipitating, so we need a large sulfide concentration and a large strontium concentration. Fortunately, our K for this is much smaller, so it's much less soluble. So we will see this precipitate out uh, at pretty small concentrations. Our strontium starts as 0.6 molar, a little above, but the, uh, there is some dilution, so we're at about maybe 0.2 molar when we're all said and done. But if we take 0.2 and figure out what this needs to be then, well then this needs to be uh, 2 times 10 to the negative 7th molar. So the big question then is how do you get the sulfite to kind of come out? And the problem is, is that your sulfite can be in one of three forms. It can either be in the sulfurous acid, in which case it's mostly SO2 and water. It can be in the bisulfite form or it can be in the sulfate form. And so to figure out what you're gonna have for that, you need to look at the pKa values of this sulfurous acid. So the first pKa is where we're gonna transition from this mixture and this mixture. So at a pH of 1.9, we should have relatively similar quantities of these two things. At a pH of 7.2 is where we transition from the bisulfite to the sulfite. And so if we're at a pH of 7.2 or above, then we're looking at a point where these two are either equivalent or there's more of this. So at a pH one unit above the second pK, there will be 10 times as much of this as this. So by the time we hit two, two units of pH above 7.2 and we're at nine to 10 range, we're looking at now 100 times more of this than this. So effectively we can consider it to be all of this and, and none of this at that point. Uh, so that's what we're dealing with and that's why we're, we're pretty confident that the precipitate we're seeing is from the strontium and the sulfite rather than strontium and hydroxide based on the solubility of this being much greater and based on the fact that we've raised our pH well above that second pK to where we're mostly predominantly in the sulfite form as opposed to something else.